Hi guys, this is Tracy from Bump in the Night Productions. I hope you're all happy and well and life is treating you kind. Today we're at a location that um, I have been to before with another friend of mine and also I came here one night with Bernie. Um, this was the first time Bernie had been here. We were at a, another cemetery before we came here that night and the vibe between the two cemeteries was extremely different. This place was unwelcoming. Um, Bernie and I saw what we believe to be some sort of entity. Um, I think it could have been actually a guardian or a watcher of the cemetery. However, that's open for debate. Um, anyway, it was so unsettling that we left. Uh, I was rattled, however, not afraid because I just refused to show fear. Bernie, on the other hand, is very new to this and she was absolutely terrified. She could not get out of this place quick enough. And you know what? If someone I care about is with me on an investigation or a photography session and they feel uneasy or feel like they're at risk, I'm not going to make them stay. If they need to leave, we leave. So we're going to have a look around here today. And I've noticed there's a few changes that have been happening here. So I'm wondering whether or not that could have had something to do with what we experienced the night we were here. Um, who knows? But anyway, come with me and we're going to have a look around this place. And uh, I'll get some photos, which I will put up at the end of the video for you to look at. So please come with us and enjoy. Just to give you some idea, um, at night time, this is not lit. So you've got this corridor of trees here. And if I just pan you around, that's the entrance we came in, which is the back entrance. So Bernie and I probably got about a quarter of the way in the gate. We hadn't reached the first lot of tree line. Um, straight away, Bernie's camera was not working. I got a few photos. And then I guess you could say we both picked up on a vibe in here that wasn't okay. Um, we were pretty certain that we both saw something. And at first, I thought it may have been, as you can see here, there's some walls which are for the interment of ashes. At first we thought it might have been that, then we saw movement. So we pretty much knew straight away it wasn't those walls. So, we stopped beyond the tree line there. I got a couple more photos and Bernie was absolutely terrified. She wanted to leave. I took a couple more pictures. I'll put a couple of photos up at the end with the daytime ones for comparison. Um, what I actually did, I focused my lens so it was zoomed in a bit more. I got a couple of orbs. I got one big one particularly here on the path. But to me, behind it looks like there's a black mass, a figure. Now, I'm pretty confident in saying that when Bernie and I do go out, we have got our guardians watching over us and we do have our loved ones watching over us and it's something that we always ask of them before we start. And I know for a fact that I have got certain loved ones that do watch over me. Um, plus also, because I refuse to show fear, I think that has also a really big uh, impact on the situation. So yeah, so we left. Um, we actually drove down to the beach after just to sort of regather our thoughts and just be near the ocean. Um, the beach is only like not even a five minute drive from here. So you've got the beach that end, five minutes away, and down the other end, it's actually a main road. And once again, I'm not giving away the location because even though people who are based here in Adelaide, if you're watching this, you'll probably guess where it is. But once again, it's not a cemetery that's got high security. You can walk through here any time of the day or night because it is a public thoroughfare. You can walk through from here to the back of the cemetery. So, you know, it does leave this place open to vandalism, which is something I despise anybody who desecrates someone's uh, earthly remains, their resting spot. 
Um, <laughs> you're just the lowest of the low if you do that crap, I'm sorry. But yeah, so that just gives you some idea of the... It's actually really pretty though too. That's the thing that sort of blew us away. Like, how could something that looks so, so pretty during the day take on such a sinister overtone at night? But anyway, we're going to move on a bit and I'll show you around a bit more. I apologise if there's a lot of traffic in the background. Like I said, we are near a main road. So I probably won't film as much once we get closer to the main road. However, I'll probably just do some photos. Having said that, if there's anybody here wishes to communicate with me you are welcome to talk into my camera I'll be able to hear you when this is played back also are you able to give me an answer as to what we saw the night that Bernie and I were here was this a guardian or a watcher of the cemetery if so please talk into my camera and let me know and once again I come here with the utmost respect, love and light. You are welcome to communicate with me through my camera. You are not welcome to touch me. You are not welcome to follow me home. Only those who are pure of heart may speak to me through my camera. Those who are not pure of heart and who carry bad will, you are not to communicate with me. My guardians and my loved ones who have walked before me will not allow it. So let's just have a little walk around and we'll see whether or not we get anything back when I um, edit this. It's not an overly big cemetery, but as you can see, they've utilised the space pretty well. Actually, a couple of my dad's friends are, um, were buried here. I'm a big believer, like, when you die, that's not the end. I know everybody has their belief system. However, this place is just where your earthly remains are put to rest. You are not with that body, unless, of course, you've not crossed over and you feel the need to pop in and out of here, which, you know, some people do. And I think we've shown that in our orbs and also in what we've seen just visually. It kind of makes me sad because I often wonder why, why they haven't crossed over, why they feel like they need to stay. Have they got unfinished business? Are there things that they wish they could have said to their loved ones before they passed and they never got the chance? You know, you could reel off 101 questions and 101 reasons why. We actually have a high school next door to um, this cemetery as well. So if you can hear kids in the background, that's the reason why. This area we're heading over to now, you can see a big mural on the wall. I believe this was also done originally for children who had passed away. But I kind of get the feeling this mural's actually been replaced by one that was formerly on there because this one looks a lot newer. And Maybe not, it could be the same one. But they did have um, they did have a a plaque of some sort up at one stage stating that this was put up for um, kids. That's bright and that's colourful. 
everything that a child would love. Dolphins, my godson absolutely loves dolphins. Ah, here we go. So it is the same mural. So it's dedicated to the memory of the babies laid to rest in the north. Well, I've just given away the location now, but anyway, damn it. So it's got the names of the babies. And the year oh, twin babies on there you cannot imagine losing one child would be hard enough but to lose two little twins little twinnies you know at birth is just you can't even begin to imagine can you so yeah so that's the um, it's a big beautiful mural from the memorial that they've got dedicated to the little ones who for whatever reason made that transition I like to think they're little angels now gives you another view Another thing that really interests me about um, cemeteries, especially older ones, is that not just for the paranormal side of things, but also art. Some of the monuments that were built were done by hand, and to me, some of these are just works of art, like the angels that you see, or the little cherubs, or the little lambs, and all the beautiful, intricate work that goes into these things. You don't see that anymore. One, because I think it would be so expensive if you wanted to have something like that done and you would need to have the money to do it. And two, I guess as we've evolved, well, whether we've evolved or not is another thing, as time's gone on, we've gone for the more compact, you know, neat and tidy, everything sort of being in the same height, same order look, as where I feel the older cemeteries and the monuments that they made are just they're absolutely beautiful and I think by capturing it on film and recording it you're keeping a little piece of history alive because let's face it over time things do deteriorate things get vandalized you know unfortunately it happens but to be able to have that on film I think it's pretty cool so enjoy I hope you guys can hear me over the traffic we're closer to the main road and being closer to the main road this is also the really older section so this would be a lot of the people that first moved to this area years and years ago but what's made me a little bit pissed off I guess you'd say these little white cards are renewal licensing you know as you know when you die you have your plot and after a certain amount of time you need to renew that plot because if you don't someone else can be interred there I guess the point I'm making about this this is a historical part of the cemetery you've got graves here dating back to the 1800s so as far as I'm concerned you know these graves need to be preserved they are part of the history of this area now there's one on this grave here now this young guy who died he was an Anzac he was a soldier his family his family's here and then you have this bloody renewal notice so these need to stay 
I mean, I'm sure they probably are, but just the fact that they put these on here in the first place and not stop to think about the historical significance of these graves. Like, I mean, look at this one. This was made out of old corrugated iron. They need to, they need to stay put. That's all there is to it. You know, I was talking earlier about, you know, these old headstones being a form of artwork. Well, they are. The fact that something from the 1800s can still be easily read and it's, I, you know, it's actually got me really riled right now. It, it really disappoints me that we sometimes think so little of our history. And I mean, you see it every day. You see buildings being torn down, patches of land that have had historical significance not just you know to the people but also the land for animals and wildlife you just see it being ripped up and just consumed every day for human greed you know some people might not think this is important it is though because when you wipe out beautiful buildings beautiful cemeteries historical landmarks, pieces of pieces of the countryside, the planet that, you know, are there for it, have been there for a, you know, a long, long time. And then in the blink of an eye, a corporation decides just to tear it up. What kind of a legacy are we leaving for our children and our grandchildren? Is there anybody here that would like to speak into my camera? Say your name. Acknowledge that you're here. Feel free to talk. When I play this back and edit, I'll be able to hear you. Some of the graves here are really, really beautiful. Some of them I just took a photo of a woman's grave. She was only buried in 2015 and it's already probably caved in a good three feet. Um, you know, that tells me that the ground that they've used here is, it's not good. It's just a bit further back down there, but I'm not gonna show, film it. I've actually just taken a couple of pictures. Um, I might even contact Bright contact the council and um, say hey are you aware if so what are you going to do about it you know some people they come out here and they've got beautiful little gardens look at that and this lavender smells amazing This girl. Beautiful smile. There's actually a few people here today tending to families, graves, putting flowers and things down for them. Eventually going to make her way down to the back entrance and it's a glorious day here in Adelaide today the weather is just beautiful we're just that one step closer towards summer and I for one can't wait to be at the beach I've missed my beach walks during winter and being in the water the salt water helps a lot with my um, health issues. I have fibromyalgia and also my test results have also shown that it's leaning towards lupus as well 
and I've got some degenerative spinal issues happening too which for this last week has not been fun I actually was going to go to another cemetery today however I chose to do this smaller one because I just don't think I'd be able to do all the walking that would be needed so hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll um, venture out to this other one that I want to take you to because I haven't been there before so I'm a little bit excited and remember if you see anything sense hear anything please comment below tell us like we've said we may pick up on stuff but we're going to do things a bit different on our channel. We're not actually going to say anything. So if you guys pick up on stuff that we've picked up on and you comment below and you let us know, that would be so cool. I was actually going to use my pendulum today to communicate, but I've decided not to. Um, my pendulum that I use, I generally use that to contact family, friends. So what I'm thinking is I will get another one, which will be only for investigations. I won't be using the one that I use for communicating with my loved ones. I just feel the energy could get tainted on it. Even though I cleanse it regularly, um, I always sage everything. Quite often even before we go and after so I just thought I was really tempted to actually use it when I went to the old Adelaide jail when I was in Percival so I actually went back there with the intention of doing that and it's almost as though my guardians or loved ones were saying bad idea don't so I didn't and I'm glad I didn't so we're gonna have a walk down the back now and we'll check things out down here. I have to say when I've been here, I am always blown away by this um, this tombstone and grave site. It's one that's obviously been prepaid for and erected in preparation. But the tombstone is in the shape of a book. And as you can see, this would not have been a cheap exercise. I'm having a bad hair day. I just caught my reflection in the tombstone. But yeah, how cool is that? Imagination. Be really interesting to see in years to come just who ends up being buried here. Well, the other thing I'm thinking is have they been buried here already and the engraving just hasn't taken place that's another that's another possibility as well but I know quite often now people will pre-purchase um, have the headstone up have their names put on there the year of their birth and then once they've transitioned the rest of the details are filled in I think another really important thing to think about is the concept of death has been taken out of our hands due to her funeral homes and, and such. You know, as we years ago, um, the family dealt with it. The family was there, the family was more involved. I think that is slowly starting to happen again, which I'm really happy to say. I think it's really important. I know for one, when my mum and dad make their transition, which I know is going to happen and no, I'm not looking forward to it and it's going to break my heart. I kind of find a bit of peace in the fact that I want to be involved as much as possible in making sure that their earthly vessel gets the send off that it should because in my heart of hearts, I know they won't be there. They will have transitioned on the next part of their journey. So the only thing I care about now is my parents enjoying the remainder of what life they have, having a good death, a good transition, and us all getting along 
loving each other and then you know getting on with our lives and always carrying them in our heart if you've got any thoughts about how you view the process of when someone passes pop your thoughts down below you know a lot of cultures are very hands-on with um, the death process and I think maybe depending on the circumstances too it's it's a great thing you know obviously if you've had someone who's died in a horrific accident or something like that or a murder you know you may not want to be involved in it but I think you should have the choice because at the end of the day I don't believe there is such a thing as closure I think you learn to live around the event incorporate it into your life learn from it and try not to make try not to make the mistakes that you may have already made in your life I think there's nothing sadder in life when you see people who keep making the same mistakes over and over again and they're not learning the life's lesson everything happens for a reason as much as sometimes we don't want to hear that but it does and I think if you're open listen out for those messages that your guardians or your loved ones are sending you because they will tell you the answers they will give you the signs that you need to follow in order to find out why certain things have happened and what it can mean for you how you can learn from it how you can live a good life and get the best out of it. Okay guys, that's going to conclude today's video. Thank you all very much for joining me on this short little journey today. However, hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll be well enough to head out to the next destination which is a lot bigger, a lot more walking. So until I'm ready to do that, I figured play it safe, go for something smaller today. And remember, if you like our videos, please click on the like button, subscribe to our channel, leave comments. We will take good, bad and ugly. We, we're not fussy. Um, however, don't be hateful. That's all I say. And that's a word that I don't have in my vocabulary. It's a word that our father taught us not to use. He said, you can't get much worse than hate. So you know what? If you want to be constructive and leave a constructive comment, go for it. Anyway, so I'm going to head off and get something to eat now because I'm so hungry. I always get so hungry after doing these. Every time. doesn't matter what time of the day or night. Anyway. This is Tracy from Bump in the Night Productions signing off and we will see you soon. Peace, love and prosperity. Bye.